It took us a few days of travel to reach the cathedral that Icy Hot told us to find. Honestly, it wasn't too difficult to miss. An old church, tucked away in a wooded grove. It was a simple matter of handing over the missive the prince had gifted us. And with that, we were given the items we needed to get through the cursed forest. Blessed torches that gave off light but no heat. Some call them ghost torches due to the pale blue light they give off. Some even say the flame of a ghost torch is taken directly from the underworld, guarded and kept by those ordained by the gods, passed out as a blessing to those deemed worthy. <laughs> or those with enough coin to feign worthiness. We were also given bottles of potions meant to prevent turning should one of us be bitten, vials of holy water, Blessed boundary stakes for our campsites, a set of enchanted cloaks, and a quiver of blessed silver arrows. Such things were expensive, but all it took was for the priest to set his eyes on that princeling seal. <laughs> he all but stumbled over his feet to give the supplies to us without a single coin spent from our purses. The arrows were split between you and me, since shitty scales couldn't hit the broad side of a barn, and now... It was up to me to make sure you didn't waste them if things got dangerous. On the week's trip there, I trained you. Every single day, every moment we weren't traversing the land, we devoted hours to your practice. Hmm. And I have to say, I was pretty impressed with the effort you put in. Even though you still had a ways to go, you at least had a chance of survival now. As we woke from our camp from the previous night, a camp we had set up right outside the borders of the Cursed Forest, we practiced while Kirishima went off to scavenge the last components for your painted band. I was behind you, showing you how to properly hold the bow. Because once again, your stance was off, your body was rigid, and got even more so when I got close to you. Your body is too stiff. Widen your stance slightly. Relax your shoulders. <sighs> You're holding your arrow wrong again. I keep telling you it's like this. See? I don't know what kind of shit archery you knew of back in your world, but here, that's not going to work. Hmm. Here, I'm going to get behind you and adjust your stance. Back straight against my chest. Put your legs like this, arms like this. Good. You're getting better. Don't forget to breathe and keep both your eyes open. Pull back. And... Loose. I'm back! Oh! Ah! Careful, traveler! <laughs> Good shot, outsider. Relax, shitty scales. They missed you by a mile, you whelpling. So you say? I felt the wind off that one. Whew. I think I saw my life pass before my eyes. Huh. You're always so damn dramatic. Did you find the shit you needed? It's now or never. We're heading in after you finish it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Just had to find some moon leaf. I just have to set everything up. <laughs> Already done. While you were out, I set it up for you. It's over the fire and ready for the rest of the ingredients. So just throw it all in. Should be hot enough by now to melt it all. Right. Okay. Man, it's midday and just... Look how dark it is past those trees. It looks like it's nighttime in there. <sighs> That's because it's cursed. 
Undead creatures wouldn't thrive in a place if it had light. Well, that and the fact that the trees are so massive and dense. There's no way even a shred of sunlight is getting through them. <laughs> Once we go in there, we won't see the sun again until we're out the other side. Uh, I'm liking the sound of this less and less. I, uh... <laughs> are you seriously sure there's no other way? I just... Being right outside the forest is scary enough. Going in is gonna be a whole other story. Uh, what happened to getting the outsider back to their world no matter what, huh? You're gonna let a little forest and some spiders stop you from fulfilling your promise, Ajiro? Didn't know red dragons had yellow bellies. Okay, well... No. Of course not. But... They aren't just spiders, Bakugo. Ugh. I can do this. I'm just nervous is all. Uh... Huh? I am being nice, outsider. Can't have him turning tail on us in this place. He just needs a bit of encouragement is all. <laughs> Your mother was right. Your skills in rallying people's spirit need some work. Oh, shut up. Do their stupid band already. We gotta start covering ground. <sighs> fine, fine. Always so cruel. I need some fur and a bit of the fabric off your cloak, Bakugo. Ah, uh, and I have to get a scale off real quick. My cape? Why the hell does it have to be mine? Because, oh mighty prince, ember spiders and cinder foxes aren't native to these parts and they're a component in the paint. There we go. This scale should be big enough. <sighs> Don't hurt yourself, shitty lizard. Here. Are these pieces big enough or do you need more? <sighs> Those are perfect. Thanks, Bakugo. Wanna watch, Traveler? It's pretty interesting to see everything melt down. Here, you can sit next to me. I'll put my wing in front of you for a moment because I have to use my own flames for this for a bit. But you can peek over and watch. Just be careful, okay? <laughs> watch your eyebrows, outsider. Last time Shitty Scales did this for me, he nearly burnt mine clean off. <laughs> That's because you didn't listen to me. There we go. Ah. I'll have to find ore soon. That took a bit out of me. Hmm. We'll get you some after we get out of the forest. You shouldn't be using your fire in there anyways. <clears throat> well, hurry it up then, you two. I want to get started. Patience, Bakugo. It has to cool some. I can't just slather it on like this. Huh? Oh, you were curious about the ore? Well, dragons like me, we need to eat metal ore to stoke our inner fire. See, unlike humans, we have a second stomach. It breaks down the ores we eat and it's where our fire breath comes from. So what keeps us alive and healthy by keeping us warm? If it gets too low, we get really cold. And if we get really cold, we can get really sick. Okay, there we go. That should be cool enough. Here, hun. Let me see your arm. Let me know if it's too warm in your skin, okay? I'll be really careful. Don't worry. Just sit nice and still for me. I watched as Kirishima painted the symbol along your bicep. It was intricate and fine, and in the same place as mine. 
His eyes were intense and focused as he painted on the details with his claws. Careful to not break the skin as he did so. <laughs> for a big, giant, clumsy lizard, he can be pretty delicate when the situation calls for it. It took about 15 minutes, and while he was busy with that, I picked up our camp and got our supplies ready for our venture into the forest. I swapped out my cape for one of the enchanted cloaks we were given. I hated taking my cape off, but it was necessary. One thing was for sure. It was going to be a long three days. One more spot. And there. All done. How's it feel? <laughs> a little tingly? Well, that means it's working. That's just the magic. It'll take a few days to fully bind you so that you don't notice it, but... Should be all better by the time we get out of, um... <laughs> there. <laughs> Here, you idiots. Put these cloaks on and keep them on. They'll keep those bastards from sensing our warmth. Uh, uh, I don't like the feel of the magic on these. They feel so icy. That's the whole point, shitty scales. Now grab one of the packs and let's go. <sighs> if there's ever a time to be brave, now would be it. Why can't I just shift into my normal form? We could be safer that way. You're kidding me, right? I told you the monsters in there sense heat. You're a walking furnace when you're in your dragon form. You might as well season yourself while you're at it. Now, let's stop wasting so much time. Come on. Yeah, that, uh, that makes sense. Doesn't mean I have to like it, though. What was that? Don't know. Now hurry up. Let's go. B B Bakugo? What was that? It sounded so close. We're not even in the forest yet. Uh, are you sure we're equipped enough for this? I mean, the prince said not a lot of people make it out of there alive. Oh, God. <sighs> are you going to stand there and write a damn sonnet about this place? N n no! You're mumbling like that damn Deku. Let's go, Kirishima. Now. The sooner we get in there, the sooner we can get out. Ah, uh, coming. The entrance to the Hedera Forest was nothing but a small, pitch black opening between endlessly dense trees that stretched high into the air. There was a sickly breeze that blew from inside that smelled like decay and wet leaves. The light falling into thick, cold darkness that stretched on for miles. Kirishima was apprehensive as we approached the entrance. As were you. But me? <laughs> I knew we'd make it out alive. No undead creature could take me down. And as long as I'm alive and kicking, you and Shitty Scales would be safe. As we followed the overgrown path inside the forest, I pulled the ghost torches from the pack and removed their caps. The pale blue light of their flames chased back the thick, suffocating darkness that engulfed us as we make our way down the beaten path. The flame from our torches looked warm, but gave off no heat at all. I pass one to you, taking note of how your hands tremble as you take it from me. All I could do was give your shoulder a squeeze to steady you as we began to press onwards. There were fallen trees all around us. Distant sounds of creaking and chittering. Movement above us as the light from our torches disturbed the creatures and sent them skittering for shelter. Mushrooms grew on the dead trees. Large swaths of cobweb fluttered from the branches like the ripped flags of a defeated army. 
it was a gloomy, miserable place. Our breath condensing in the chilled air as we walked. Due to the lack of sunlight, warmth was rare in this cursed place. Amongst the skittering and creeks, there were soft groans from deeper within the forest. Almost like the sound of a man's last breaths. I kept us moving forward. Because I knew that whatever was making that noise was long dead, could no longer be saved. Kotsky, what's that sound? Nothing you want to see, Ichiro. Trust me. Keep moving. And don't look up. Keep your eyes forward. Your voice down. Stay on the path and don't stray, outsider. This is not the place to go wandering off on your own. You too, Kirishima. I, I don't plan on it. <laughs> don't gotta tell me twice. Shitty scales, don't you dare. I'm sorry I looked up. Oh, there are so many eyes. Oh my god, sir. Are they watching us? Are, are those the ghoul spiders? Uh, yeah, that's them. They see the light, but they don't sense our heat. They only like warm prey. So keep moving. They know we're here, but as long as we don't make them think we're food, we'll be fine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Traveler, can... can I hold your hand? Thank you. My nerves are all shot. It's like I can feel all those eyes on me from up there. Uh, um... Bakugo? What are those big bundles? The ones hanging from the trees. Is that... silk? What? Never seen a spider wrap up its prey before. Those are the poor, unlucky bastards who came before us. Those are people in there? Keep your voice <clears throat> down, idiot. <clears throat> yes. People. Horses. Griffins. Whatever the hell they could get a hold of that wandered close enough. Oh. Oh, elders. I saw one of them move. Kotsky. We could... We should help them, right? You want to piss them off by stealing their food? No. There's nothing we can do to help them now, Ijiro. Just keep walking. They were dead as soon as those things got their fangs into them. That's terrible. Gods, what a horrible fate. Yeah. One I'd like to avoid for all of us. So, stop talking so much and stay close. We have to keep covering ground. We have three days worth of travel until we're free from here. Mm. How do we... How do we tell when it's been a day? Mm. It's so dark. Didn't I say to stop talking so much? <sighs> we don't. We just... We keep moving for as long as we can. And we set up camp when we need rest. Okay. <laughs> Hold. Cap the torches. Now. We're going through a nursery grotto. 
See up ahead. Those are egg sacs. We're going to move quietly and quickly. Keep your heads down and don't touch anything. Oh God, so oh gods. I hate this so much. Here, outsider. Hold on to me. Kirishima, you hold on to them. We're going single file and we're going to move. Step where I step and don't hesitate. And don't talk. all around us. I know. Just keep it down. Keep moving. Just keep moving. Ignore them. They're just babies. They're not big enough to hurt you. But they're gross. They sound so heavy. Oh, are you sure they're just babies? I don't want to know what the adults look like. You keep running your mouth and your annoying voice is going to draw them in and you'll get to see them, so shut up. At least the outsider has the good sense to stay quiet. Oh, I know. I... Okay. Huh. That one was so close. Almost. I don't see as many egg sacs up ahead. We're almost out of the nursery. Should be good now. You two still in one piece? Y yeah, good. A little shaky. Just really happy one of those baby spiders didn't fall on me. I really don't think I would have been able to stay chill. Did did I use that term right, traveler? I've uh, been picking up on some of your words. <laughs> huh. Yeah. We're lucky. Here, you can light your torches again. We should be in the clear now. All right, now let's get a move up. Outsider, don't move. <laughs> Kirishima, I'm going to take my hand away from your mouth, and you're going to be quiet while I help them. If you scream, you could get them bit, so stay quiet. <laughs> It's on their back. I know. I can see it. Outsider. Outsider. Look at me. Don't move around like that. Stay still. Slow breaths. I'm going to use my sword and flip it off you. Oh my god, it just moved. Uh, oh god. It almost takes up their whole back. There's no way that's just a baby. C can't you just kill it? And send the whole damn colony into a frenzy. No. Now both of you, stand still and shut up. <clears throat> there. 
lights off you. Now let's go. You're okay. You're fine. You listen to me, and you let me get it off you. You didn't panic. You did good. You're a right outsider. It's off you now. Traveler, you're okay. It's okay. <sighs> Just hug them already, Kirishima. You're better at this comforting shit than me. Of course. Come here. Gotsky, come here too. I can see that look on your face. That look when you're trying to be brave but you're terrified. <laughs> it's okay to be scared. I'm not scared. Hmm. <sighs> Just... Come here for a second, okay? I think we could all use a bit of comfort. Make it quick. <clears throat> what? What was? We need to keep moving. Come on, you two. Keep close. <laughs> uh huh. Right behind you guys. Hotsky, are we gonna make it out of here okay? Of course we are. I don't want to hear that question tone from you, Eijiro. We'll be fine. Trust me. I'll get us out of here. Right, yeah. No, I, yeah. I trust you. <laughs> hey, Traveler. Could you, um, hold my tail? I just don't want anything to crawl on me, you know? Oh. Thanks. The next few hours were just as miserable. Picking through the thorny, overgrown path as we made our way deeper and deeper into the depths of the forest. The spiders overhead watched our every move, curious of us, wanting to see if we would make one slip up that would allow them to snatch us into an early grave. I was pretty sure I had a bruise on my arm from where you clung onto me. Your hand shaking from your encounter. But, I didn't mind so much as it meant that you were close and safe. I could hear all sorts of things in the distance. The groaning calls of the undead. At one time I could have sworn I heard a woman sobbing. A mourning maiden most likely. A type of ghost formed when a young woman lost her life in a brutal fashion and was unable to find peace. In a place like this, where even the gods themselves have turned away, there was no peace for anyone who ventured here, dead or alive. Thankfully, Shitty Scales didn't seem to notice the weeping, or he would have tried to run to her aid. We would have been lost. After a good bit of traveling, we stopped for a moment to take a small break. It was much needed, after so much walking. <sighs> I'm exhausted, but this is only a small breather. We gotta keep walking for a couple more hours before we sleep. I want out of this damned forest as soon as possible. <sighs> Boy, I gotta piss. You idiots stay here and don't move. You hear me? What? Uh, okay. Don't go too far, okay? The last thing I want is to lose either of you in here. I won't. <sighs> Be back in a second. And I mean it. Don't move or make a damn sound. We won't. 
It was enough to keep me a bit warm, but sitting in one spot like this has me freezing. <sighs> oh, thank you, Traveler. Your body warmed this nice. You know what? I got an idea. Just gonna gather a couple of sticks together. Like this, and there we go. I'm gonna start a tiny little fire so we can stay warm. <sighs> Perfect. It's not big or anything, but it'll do. Here, come here, traveler. Come warm your hands. Ah, <sighs> that's better. I really hate being cold. Uh, Baka go. That shit out. Quick. Put it out. Uh, what? What? Huh? <clears throat> you goddamn idiot. I was gone for less than a minute and you started fire. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Baka go. I, I was just cold and. Since the heat left over from your fire. Oh, shit. No outsider. We. We can't run. We have to stay still. If we run, they chase us. going to have one shot at this. Keep hold of your torches. We're going to crawl. Slowly. Towards the east. That's where the path picks back up. Over there, see? Between those two dead trees. No sudden movements. Just... Slowly. I'll go first. You two idiots stay close. And keep your mouth covered, shitty scales. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, merciful elders. I hate this. Good. Uh, You're both doing good. Just keep moving. Slow. No sudden movement. Guys. There's... What are crawling up behind me? Stop. What do I do? Just what do I do? What? Stop what moving. Do I... <laughs> Both of you. Just lay still. Let it pass by us. It's getting closer. It's gonna touch me. Shitty scales. <laughs> Ajero. Do. Not. Move. Stop talking. Stay still. No matter what happens, don't move. Don't scream. Don't even breathe hard. Look at me. You're fine, Ajero. You're fine. The last thing you want is to get bitten. Understand me. If those fangs even graze your skin, you're dead. That's supposed to make me feel better. <laughs> God, it's, it's on my tail. It's stepping on my tail. Shh. Be still. Quiet. Both of you. Quiet. Uh, 
Danger up. Hold on. Traveler! I can't move! It's trapping me up! No! Not that! Don't use your flames, idiot! You'll attract hordes of them! Damn! He set the whole grove on fire! We don't have much time until the whole goddamn nest shows up! Where the hell did it? There! Over there! Hang on, Ajiro! We're coming! Damn it! No! No! Taking him up into the trees! Can't use my magic. It'll only attract more. <laughs> hang on. So how do you mean hang on? We have to get him now. Adrio! <laughs> Got you. Holy oh gods. Outsider. Nice shot. We gotta go now. We don't have much time. This way. You can't fight a whole nest of these things! Run! Katsuki... I... <sighs> We've got your shitty scales. <sighs> Keep up, Outsider. Come on! Watch the roof! Spare torch is on my hip. Grab it for me. This. This cave looks abandoned, so. We should be good for now. Holy shit. I'm going to lay him down. Get the silk off him before he wakes up. Try. Try not to tear it up too badly. One good thing to come out of this is that we can sell this shit for a premium when we get out of here. <sighs> Seems like those damn spiders are heading back to the fire Kirishima set with his flames. As we both worked to unwind the thick silk from Kirishima's body, I could see your hands were trembling. Hell, mine were too. But we worked in silence. Nothing between us but the sounds of the forest outside, our shaky breathing, and the faint drip of water from somewhere inside the cave. I pulled the gathered silk from your hands and combined it with my own, putting it away neatly. I might have seemed unbothered by everything, but focusing on the task was allowing me to calm down. Something I knew I needed to do before Kirishima woke up. It could have gone better. I could have planned it better. But while Kirishima setting fire to part of the grove was dangerous, it would work in our favor. The spiders would be busy now either throwing themselves into the fire like light-struck moths, repairing the damage we did, or remaking their egg sacs. That would take their attention off hunting us. We still had our cloaks, though we were down three torches. I had made sure we each had a spare, so we wouldn't be stumbling around blind in that horrid place when we did press on. 
My heart was still thundering in my ears as I looked down at Kirishima's face. Slack as if in sleep. Though it wouldn't be for long. The outsider saved your scaly ass. They shot you down from that tree in one go. You're safe now. We managed to get away from the nest. As long as we stay low for a few hours, we should be fine. You? You saved me? <laughs> Thank you, Traveler. I... I owe you my life. <sighs> it's okay. Come here. It's okay. I'm safe. We're... we're all safe now. But... it's okay to cry. So just let it all out. Gods... I'm so sorry, you guys. I couldn't help but just scream and... and use my fire. It was just... it was really scary. I thought it was going to be spider food for sure. Like we'd let that happen, shitty scales. It's fine. We're out of there. So don't beat yourself up, idiot. I would have done the same damn thing if I got grabbed. <sighs> you two and your damn hugs. <sighs> we should rest here a bit. Take a breather. We all gotta calm down from what just happened before we keep going. Don't wanna risk slipping up. Outsider, you keep Kirishima company. I'm going to put out those stakes the priests gave us. You don't mind if I hug you like this for a bit longer? I just... I need it, if that's okay. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. <sighs> Thank you so much. For saving me back there. You really are amazing. <laughs> it's a good thing he gave these damn things to us. I was just expecting a bag of salt, but... Looks like Iziot's name's got some real weight behind it. The blessings on these things are strong enough to keep anything from sneaking up on us. And they'll last us all the way through the forest. We'll need all the protection we can get right now. Sorry, by the way, Kotsky. About starting a fire like that. <laughs> You're sorry, eh? You've got a real thick skull sometimes, shitty scales. <sighs> the entire point of wearing these cloaks and using the ghost torches was to avoid giving off any heat. Uh, yeah. I know. Guess I just wasn't really thinking. It's just so... so cold here. You'll be alright. We won't be in the forest much longer. Just two more days of travel. After we get out of this hellhole, there's a town with a hot spring about two days out. You can soak in the hottest water you can imagine and eat plenty of meat. You think you can hang in there, eh, Jero? <laughs> that sounds amazing right about now. Yeah. I think I can hang on. Just wish I had some ore. It's hard being so chilled. I know. We'll get you plenty when we get out of here. But in the meantime, we can... Use our body heat while we're resting to keep each other warm. Now 
Now dry your eyes and come here, both of you. This is strictly for survival, got it? So don't go thinking I actually enjoy cuddling up to you idiots like this. We can use my fur cape as a blanket while we're resting. But I'll be packing it up while we travel, so don't get any bread ideas, you little thief. <laughs> it is a nice cape. I don't really blame them for stealing it from you. It's comfy and soft. And it smells like you, Kotsky. It's comforting. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Now oh, come on. Get some rest, you two. I'll take the first watch. Nothing should be able to pass the boundary of those stakes, but... Just in case. Huh? Oh, shut it, you. I'll be fine. I'll get some sleep later. Don't even offer to take watch. You need rest. Mm-hmm. Oh. Huh. <sighs> I'll take over for Bakugo after a while, so... Don't worry, Traveler. And when he wakes up, we'll keep going. I really want to get out of here. Right. Now, sleep, both of you. Of course, your sleep was restless. More restless than it's ever been. But I couldn't blame you. Sleeping in a place such as this was difficult. As we lay there, huddled together to keep warm in that pitch black cave, we could hear those damned spiders in the trees above us. At least the cave would give us shelter from them if they decided to fall from the trees again. You were clearly shaken up from what we just went through. And again, there's no way I could blame you for that either. Hell, I was shaken up myself. I'm not usually swayed by anything. There's just something about spiders as big as that. Something about the fate that would befall you if you were caught by one. I don't even like to think about it. You were relieved that you managed to save Kirishima from that sickening fate. But you couldn't help but to think about if you had missed your shot. You haven't been in our world for long, but even so, you've started to grow attached to us. And we felt the same about you as well. As I kept watch while you and Shitty Scales drifted off into a fitful slumber, I clutched the hilt of my sword. Unease and anxiety swirling in my stomach as I stare out into the darkness of the forest. There were many monsters that lurk in the forest of the undead searching for warm flesh to sink their rotting teeth into. But I would make sure the both of you would be safe. I'd make sure we got to the end of our journey, no matter what it takes. I'd make sure you got back home.